Hello guys, this is Brian Mounts again, coming to you from the Turf Mechanic YouTube channel. I also run TurfMechanic.com, and it's where I keep most of my big uh, descriptive articles that uh, complement the videos that you're watching right now. Today, I am going to be comparing the Ego Select Cut with Touch Drive uh, self-propelled lawnmower. This is the newest version of the Ego uh, 56 volt uh, mowers. This is the top of the line unit. This is as good as they get these days. I bought this on Home Depot. Uh, you can also buy it, I think at Ace, maybe a couple other places late in 2020 and going forward, it's gonna be sold at Lowe's. Uh, so this right here is the Yard Force 120 volt uh, lawnmower. This is sold sometimes on Amazon. I bought this from mowersdirect.com. This one's a little bit harder to find because I don't know of any big box stores that carry it. Um, but the reason I'm coming to you with this comparison is that these are some of the nicest. Oh, here's my cat. These are some of the nicest, uh, strongest, top of the line battery powered lawn mowers available today. Ego has been making extremely popular uh, battery mowers for a number of years now. Uh, this is the third generation unit. And of course there's different versions of it. You can get it without the touch drive. There's turn on there. You can get it without the touch drive. Um, you can get it without the select cut. Um, I have both. So uh, this is billed as a 21 inch deck, uh, but as all of the decks are they the cutting blade is a little bit smaller uh, the yard force um, is also built well this is built as a 22 inch deck however the blade is a little bit not as it's not that bad this blade is bigger than this one by about half an inch or so i uh i don't recall the exact dimensions off the top of my head it's something like five eighths of an inch or something like that uh, a wider blade the difference however in these blades is the select cut on this model. The select cut kind of has this crisscross blade. Um, so basically there's two blades going around in unison and that helps get a cleaner uh, cut and a better mulch from this mower, which is important because this mower is nowhere near as strong as this one. Uh, when it comes to battery mowers, most battery mowers operate or at least the nicer ones, operate with a, um, a no-load RPM speed that's controlled by the unit itself. Uh, under a no-load scenario, so like if I turn this on um, and it wasn't cutting anything, the blade would be spinning for this unit at 2700 RPMs, which is actually quite low compared to other battery mowers. Most of the battery mowers that I test um, are around 2800 RPM. Uh, Yard Force this machine boasts the biggest no load RPM speed that I know of. This thing runs at 3000 RPM under no load. Now, if you've got small, uh, like your grass has grown just a little bit and you're cutting it, it's still gonna be operating at that 3000. Like there's not enough uh, drag on the blade to really slow it down. And there's not, there's certainly not enough drag to power the motor up um, to, you know, get more strength out of it. Uh, so 3000 is really nice because there's only one blade spinning around down there. And when that blade is spinning faster, it's just going to be cutting a little bit better. Now, from my experience, this one still mulches a little bit better than this one. And this has two different blades. One of them uh, does a better job at mulching um, at the sacrifice of a little bit of battery life. But, um, but this mulch is pretty good, mostly because the blade is, is wider and it's spinning faster, which means the tip speed, so the tip of the blade is actually traveling faster than this. And because of that, it just cuts quicker and, and faster um, and mulches pretty good. However, this unit will leave mulch lines, like around the wheels. Now this one will too, but the mulch lines where it's dr dropping the clippings on the sides next to the wheel marks is a little bit more pronounced with the yard force which i don't particularly like however the clippings kind of even though there's lines they kind of disappear 
uh, pretty quickly because they're not that pronounced. What I will say for this is this is significantly stronger than this. That blade uh, is traveling faster. The blade tip speed is going faster. The RPMs are going faster. This is the only mower that I know of that advertises or that actually tells you what their boost RPM speed is. So when it needs a little bit more juice, um, it will boost that RPM speed to 3500, which is quite fast. Um, and you can imagine that that is really going to hack through lots of material better than this. Just today, what you're looking at right now, my grass, I just mowed that, just mowed this lawn with this mower. Now, I review and compare mowers all the time, so I've, I'm using them frequently, uh, but I've only got so much yard space. I haven't actually used this mower in about a month. So I wanted to reacquaint myself with it before I did this video. So I, I did this and this grass had grown up a bit, but it wasn't like crazy. And this mower still kind of bogged down in a couple little uh, thicker patches of taller grass. Um, this mower is going to be really, really good if you're mowing every three or four days and your grass isn't crazy lush. Um, if you've got extremely thick, healthy lawn or if you've got extremely thick weedy weedy grass and lots of you know patches of thistles and whatever you've got in your lawn this is actually going to have a harder time getting through it and when it comes to mulching even though this thing is going to mulch really good under normal circumstances it's not going to perform very well once you get into taller grass or wet grass or uh, you know just thicker patches of you know of the bad areas of your yard put it like that this is going to get through it very very well now having said that this is not the strongest mower out there this certainly has the biggest number on it a big 120 volt stamped all over it um, 120 volt versus 56 i mean this thing is theoretically twice as strong as that um, but it just doesn't perform twice as strong. It certainly performs stronger. There are stronger mowers out there uh, in the battery market. Um, you can go ahead and look through my archives and I've got some other reviews uh, and other comparisons of the stronger ones. Or you could just Google my website, turfmechanic.com, strongest battery mowers, and you'll find a big post of, of them all. Um, what I will say though is this is going to be performing much better for you than the Ego on a regular basis. Despite the fact that the um, that the blade is just a single blade versus a dual blade. Here, let me show you the blade. Now, before we really talk about the obvious difference with the two blade and one, I want to talk about the actual blade flexibility here. This blade is 0.11 inches thick, and those two blades, both of them are also 0.11 inches thick. It's a very common blade thickness for battery mowers. Um, the only one that I know of that has a thicker blade is the Toro 60 volt recycler, and that's got a 0.13 inch blade. Now you'll find there is a little bit of flex in this. The thicker that blade is, the less, the, the less it will flex. Basically the, the cleaner of a cut it will be. Um, because the uh, because this blade is a little over half an inch longer, um, it will flex slightly more than those, but only because it's longer. Um, this is their normal um, select cut blade system. You've got your standard straight blade right here, and then this blade is interchangeable. You can do uh, you can use this blade, which I'm using and I use most of the time for mulching, but then there is a, uh, let's say there's a better version of this that mulches a little bit better, uh, but it does cause a little bit extra wind drag, uh, drag on the grass because of the mulching, so it will deplete the battery slightly faster. It's not a big difference, uh, but for, you know, comparison's sake, the other one does mulch slightly better. I don't know if you really will tell the difference though. I do like how on the select cut, you've just got normal bolts holding this on. 
So your regular old ratchet set will take these blades off just fine. Um, this uses a highly plastic system underneath um, with this monster blade. I don't really like that, mostly because if you're pulling your blade off frequently to like sharpen it, this is plastic. I mean, the nut is plastic, so it's going to get damaged uh, faster, um, certainly if you're pulling the blade off frequently. The uh, wheels spin very good, but not on this one. This one's still going. The wheel system on this is better. The self-propelled, both of these have rear wheel self-propelled, which is exactly what you want. Now, let's talk more about self-propelled. This uses a kind of normal, I'm gonna call that a normal self-propelled system. You've got the blade and gauge bar. Uh, when it's powered on, you put that up and then the blade starts spinning. And basically you turn the mower on. But you've also got the extra self-propelled engage bar in the back. Well, it'll turn on when I do this. So this is a normal setup, having this extra bar uh, for the self self-propelled. Now, when you're, you know, functionally using the machine, you've got the blade engaged. And if you've got the self-propelled engaged and you want to stop, you have to let go with both hands, both thumbs at the same time, which is normal and everyone out there gets used to it, but it is annoying, especially when other systems have solved it. So here you've got your blade engage bar, but instead of an extra bar for the self-propelled, uh, Ego uses what they call touch sense. There are buttons right here on either side. Either one of them will make it go. You don't have to push them both at the same time. And that basically means as you're cutting, you're holding them down with the palm of your hand. And I usually only hold it down with only one of my hands. That way when I get to the end of the row, I can just let go and move. But it and turn the thing but it's just easier like you're not like fiddling around with thumbs plus you don't have this extra bar in the way so if i just want to push this like i'm just moving it from the garage to the shed or something like that i've got this bar that's kind of in the way that i don't necessarily always want to use um, certainly it's something you get used to and it's not a problem it's just what i call it a creature comfort of the ego machine it's just a better system up here. Now, you've got your, but, your button to start. Uh, you don't have a safety on off. With this, you've got the safety on off. You have to turn it on, and then you push the button to engage. But you have to turn it on first. This one, they don't have something like that. Uh, batteries. I have the biggest battery that Ego makes in here. It's a seven and a half amp hour battery. Uh, this thing goes for a very long time. Now, my guess is it goes for a very long time simply because it's, I don't want to say underpowered, but they don't rev that blade at 3000 RPM. This blade is running at 2700 RPM. It's 10% less RPMs. Um, so this battery does go longer. It's also a 56 volt, so they're able to get more amp hour out of it. With Yard Force, on the other hand, you have two of these, two batteries, both 120 volts, but they're only two and a half amp hours each. Now you operate one until it depletes, and then it moves over and it starts operating the other until it depletes. So two and a half, two and a half is five, um, if I did my math correctly. So maxing out with this, you only have five amp hours of battery time. Now, Amp hours does not mean exactly runtime, but they are very closely correlated. Uh, the voltage is closely correlated to the maximum power output uh, under a heavy load scenario. The amp hours is more closely related to the runtime. So you are going to get more runtime out of this than you are with this. Um, but 
you're gonna get more power out of this. So if you've got like a big half acre, three quarters acre, you might run into a scenario where you don't finish the yard um, because the batteries died and you might get through it on this. So if you've got a smaller yard like most people do, then either one of these are gonna work fine. You could probably get through some small yards with just one of these batteries without even putting both in. So runtime is gonna be good on both, but you will get more runtime out of this. Now, this unit, full MSRP price right now, I'm recording this on July 30th, um, July 30th, 2020. On the Home Depot website, this machine is advertised for sale at $649. Now, I live in South Oregon. I don't know if that's a regional price or what, but that's what I see right now. This sometimes is for sale on Amazon. Sometimes it is not. Uh, but I bought this for $829. And currently on Amazon and on MowersDirect.com, this thing is listed for $829. That is a big difference in price. I mean, you're talking 180 bucks for just full MSRP. Um, for 180 bucks, what you get out of this is it feels like a tool. And this feels like a toy. This is one of the quietest, which is a good thing, uh, battery mowers. It's also one of the lightest. And it's not a steel deck. This is like a composite deck. Um, plastic? I don't know. Composite. Whatever composite is. That's what it is. This is a steel deck. Uh, it is thick. It is heavy. It is sturdy. You feel like you are running a lawnmower with this. And you feel like you're running a toy with this. Now, if you're not using the self-propelled, the light factor, like the, the it's not heavy, um, is actually really nice for when you're just pushing it free. Um, I do like to push it free quite a bit in this yard because I've got so many obstacles in here. So it is comfortable to use, but it actually feels like it's bouncing and floating across the top of the grass instead of like really sinking down, getting its wheels on the ground and cutting smooth and clean the whole way through. This is the loudest battery mower that I've tested. It's still much quieter than gas but it's the loudest one and it's the heaviest one. This one feels like a beast. This one feels like a real lawnmower. It's got more power than this. It's heavier than this. It's, uh, I mean, it revs up really hard. Like when you need it to rev up, you can feel that, that power. This one, you just don't feel the power. So is 829 worth it for all of that? I think if you're comparing these two lawnmowers specifically, I kind of do think that this is worth it. Um, you get some extra creature comforts uh, in terms of this is going to fold up quicker and easier than this. Um, although it's not a big difference, you know, I mean, that's, that's it. You know, that's pretty easy to do. And this is pretty easy to do too. Now that I do that, I don't know. I mean, this is like a multi-step process. So which one's better? I don't know. I actually think this one might be a little bit better, personally. What gets me is these little clips. I don't know. It's, it just slows me down. And then sliding this down is always a little bit cumbersome. Uh, both of these move up and down easy. Neither one of them move up and down as easy as some of the others I got in the garage. But man, they're easy enough. Anybody could do that. One last thing I wanna say about this, which is a small thing, is I do like the mulch plug area. Um, the plug sits here and it, it gives a good seal. It gives a good seal. So basically you don't have a lot of extra grass clippings coming out of the back. Uh, when you don't want them to come out of the back. The yard force here, um, with the mulch plug installed, it's really loose. Yeah. And clippings leak out of it, which is somewhat annoying. But what you're going to get is the power for this thing. This thing sucks up better. So if you want to pull these mulch plugs out of the bag, you can 
and install the bag on both of these, this thing is going to suck up more material than this. And that's got to be because that blade is spinning faster. Just is spinning faster. It's a bigger blade and it's going to create more wind force in there and it's just going to suck it up better. I have another video that I posted not too long ago demonstrating the suction of all of these battery mowers and this one wasn't the best of all of the battery mowers that I tested but it was one of the best. Um, so if if you're into bagging you want, or maybe like fall comes around and you want to suck up leaves off the grass like a lawnmower this is going to perform better. So that's all I got to say about that. Both of these mowers are good buys. I don't want to say either one of them, either one of them are bad. This certainly is a good lawnmower. Um, but based on what your needs are, it's up to you to choose. $180 more, roughly, is going to get you more power. And is it worth it? That's up to you to decide. Please hit the subscribe button. Please take a look at some of the other videos that I've got in the archive. Neither one of these two mowers is the one that I recommend most to people. Uh, they're both great, but there are others that I like better. Take a look at some of those other reviews, other comparisons, and hit the like button, man. Thanks a lot.